Good afternoon. I call this meeting to order. Ms. Tanner, please call the roll. Yes, Basine. Here. Buffalo. Here. Campson. Here. Clanton. Present. Gabriel. Present. Jordan. Here. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. May I have a motion to go into close uh, session, please? Can Madam Chair, I move that we move into executive closed session. Second. Okay, it's been first uh, moved and seconded. Ms. Tanner, please call the roll. I'm going to read the resolution first. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -mm. Move that members of the school board go into a closed session for the purposes which are set out in subsection A of section 2.2-3711 of Virginia Freedom of Information Act as amended for discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the school board of the city of Norfolk pursuant to subsection 2.2-3711A1 of the act. The subjects of this portion of the session are the discussion of personnel on today's regular personnel agenda, the discussion of additional personnel in connection with an ongoing human resources investigation, and the discussion of applicants for positions on various school board advisory committees. Discussion or consideration of disciplinary and any other matters concerning students in Norfolk Public Schools that would involve the disclosure of information contained in a scholastic record pursuant to subsection 2.2-3711A2 of the Act. The subjects of this portion of the session are the discussion of, of students on today's regular student support agenda. Consultation with legal counsel and briefing by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation where discussion in open session would adversely affect the school board's negotiating or litigating posture and consultation with legal counsel regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by counsel pursuant to subsections 2.2-3711A7 and 8 of the Act. The subjects of this portion of the session are those set out above in subsections A and B of this motion and an unsolicited proposal concerning Maury High School filed with the board pursuant to the Public Private Educational Facilities and Infrastructure Act of 2002 and Board Policy DJFZ. Basine? Aye. Buffalo? Aye. Campson? Aye. Clanton? Aye. Gabriel? Aye. Jordan? Aye. We're in closed session. Good evening. I would like to call to order the regular meeting of the Norfolk School Board for Wednesday, April 19, 2023. On behalf of the members of the school board and Dr. Birdsong, I welcome each of you present this evening and those of you who are watching on TV and online. Dr. Martin is not with us tonight, so I will be chairing the meeting. Ms. Tanner, will you please call the roll? Yes. Basine? Here. Buffalo? Here. Hampson? Here. Clanton? Present. Gabriel? Present. And Jordan? Here. We will begin tonight's meeting with the pledge to the flag. Ms. Mara, will you assist us with that? Good evening. We request that all cell phones and pagers to be turned off or to vibrate at this moment. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. Thank you. May I please have a motion to adopt the school board business meeting agenda? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the uh, school board agenda as presented. May I have a second? Second. Okay, motion second by Campson. Ms. Tanner, please call the roll. Basine? Aye. Buffalo? Aye. Campson? Aye. Clanton? Aye. Gabriel? Aye. Jordan? Aye. Okay, thank you for that. We're going to move on to um, section 3.05 school board clerk's report. Ms. Tanner. Please take note of the artwork in the boardroom right now. Take a moment to look around. We have talented students at our school district from Northside Middle School, Chesterfield Academy, James Monroe, Suburban Park, and Tywater Park Elementary Schools. Let's give these students a round of applause for their hard work. 
the school clerk school board clerks report notes the observances for april this is school library month and on april to 16th we celebrated national librarian day and we also have month of the military child and purple update is today april 19th so we see people here today dressed in purple or purple badges so to honor our mil the month of military child and our students and during the week of April 5th, it was Wear Red, White, and Blue Day for Purple Up Month. Wednesday 19th, of course, is National Purple Up Day. Friday, April 21st is RED Friday. Remember everyone deployed by wearing red. And then Wednesday, April 26th is Favorite Branch of Service and Camo Day. We also recognize Child Abuse Prevention Month. Some of you, when you walked in, you saw the pinwheels downstairs, and that's something that the state of Virginia and nationally we're recognizing Child Abuse Prevention Month. So please keep our children in your thoughts and prayers. And we have a proclamation online as well for you to read. And also National Student Leadership Week is April 24th to the 30th. And Administrative Professionals Week is April 23rd to the 29th. And Administrative Professionals Day is April 26th. So be kind to your administrative professionals and give them a, a, a kudos for all the hard work that they do to support Norfolk Public Schools. And Ms. Buffalo, that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. We're gonna move on to section 3.06, superintendent's report, Dr. Bursaw. Good evening, thank you, um, Vice Chair Buffalo, members of our community and administration. Every month we'd like to highlight the wonderful things of Norfolk Public Schools, and this month we will be highlighting a variety of STEM activities at both the elementary and secondary levels, and I think you will find um, those activities to be very exciting and engaging for our students. But um, most importantly, we had our little feet meet um, at Old Dominion this year. And I want to again thank Dr. Glenda Walter, who is our Senior Director of Learning Support, Special Education Services, for her strong leadership and all that she did to make that program a success. So thank you again, Dr. Walter. So without further ado, and we had the Battle of the Books, which was just precious. We had a good time. Students read seven books, and I was just impressed at the level of detail that they knew about the books. And so it was just an exciting event. event. So without further ado, Ms. Tanner, can you <coughs> see? Yes, Channel 47 wrote a video. video. Thank you. Students from Granby High's International Baccalaureate Program traveled to Virginia Beach to get a unique look at science and technology. Our seniors at Granby are here at iFline because part of their curriculum for sciences has them look at where biology and physics intersect and also where they diverge. So we thought that the best way to do that was to bring them here, have a field trip, give them the flight experience. Um, iFly is also going to have a lab experience for them that fits in with our IB curriculum at Granby. So we're really excited to offer this to the kids. The students were treated to a presentation by iFly's general manager and STEM educator, Jason Laverius. He talked about how the company incorporates science and technology and what they do. Then they split up into two groups. One was flying after a brief training session while the others were in a lab learning about the Bernoulli principle. Then they switched. Flying was a brand new experience for me. I had a lot of fun. Um, I kind of got out of my comfort zone a little bit and uh, it was just a great experience. I'm glad to be here. So when I first went on, I was a little like shocked because I didn't really know like how, how to feel, like what to do, how to position my body. But as the minute went on, I kind of adjusted and I was able to go up and down more and kind of regain my balance, which really like was fun for me. Students left iFly with a great appreciation of what they learned and experienced. So I learned about how the wind tunnels and how drag and uh, air friction, pressure, all of that comes into play when you're trying to go up and you're trying to go down and you're trying to turn left and right. And I think that's important to know, especially when you're in an amazing venue like this. I think the experience has been great here at iFly. A lot of science and mathematics that go into uh, the iFly experience that I didn't know coming in. Um, being in the IB program and experiencing all these different things uh, opens up my eyes to a lot of experiences. Um, and it teaches me a lot of like life lessons that I'll take uh, past my high school uh, career. Norfolk Public School students in grades 3 through 7 gathered at Old Dominion University for the 19th Annual District-Wide Science Fair. This year's theme was empowering our future, 
one discovery at a time, and dozens of volunteers were on hand to judge over 100 projects on a wide variety of topics. Old Dominion provided space and science activities for attendees, while students did an outstanding job of presenting to the judges. I think it's wonderful. We love having the Norfolk Public Schools here and their students, um, getting to show them what it looks like to be on our campus and, and just that partnership with Norfolk Public Schools I think is really important for us at ODU as we're right here in the same place and we want our students to be interacting with Norfolk Public School students as well. This is very important to be involved in the science fair because this gives our students a way to explore their curiosity, the things that they wonder about. Some of our students have wondered, why do the bananas turn brown? They've wondered, what causes uh, water to travel up against gravity? It's very important to give them that time to explore and to find answers to the questions that they already have. Whether students were presenting to one judge at a time or to a group with a PowerPoint presentation, they were all very excited about their projects. So after, ye, after like maybe a year or two of wind and water hitting the, the land, you're, it's going to become erosion, as you can see. And then you're going to need seawalls to prevent erosion. So that's so you need to put seawalls down and then the erosion won't happen. I will, but it will take way, way longer. It was about melting chocolate, consistencies and rates of chocolate. I love most about, you know, presenting and talking about my work as a scientist or future scientist, obviously, because, you know, science is big like that. And, you know, we need more scientists and people in the world who can do science and stuff. So, yeah, I think it's a big opportunity for me to have here. Over 40 students in Norview High School's Leadership Center for the Sciences and Engineering spent National Biomechanics Day as guests at Old Dominion University. Students visited several different hands-on labs where they learned about a variety of biomechanical and neuromechanical engineering experiments happening at ODU. Yeah, so we have um, a technology called electromyography where we're learning how muscles fire. So our brains interact with our muscles and we want to determine just how well is that interaction going. So it can help us diagnose or even um, understand neurological diseases if need be. I hope they see some cool stuff. Um, you know, what we call uh, nerding out for ourselves. Uh, we really hope that other people can kind of get that appreciation and, uh, and really see some of the, some of the cool things that we have to offer here. In this station over here, I got to learn about walking speeds and how walking duration affects during age, like how we get to slow down during age and how we don't really have that much distance when we're older. The best part is I get to experience new majors and stuff that maybe I didn't get to experience before. Like I didn't even know about biomechanics, so I'm really excited. What's amazing is we have lots of engineering programs at Norview, but we don't necessarily, we can't expose them to all of this. So this is amazing because they can be exposed to exercise science, all kinds of biology, all kinds of how the muscles work and how can we help people age better. And the, the implications are endless and I wanted the kids to see that. So this is awesome. I think it's great. I mean, class is nice. I, I, do, I did have engineering today, but uh, I think this is also a great, great, great use of time. Uh, it wasn't something I was looking at, uh, but it is close, close to home. Could be some uh, I pursue out of high school. It's going great. Uh, I'm learning some new stuff. Uh, I was already interested in the field, but I mean, this just kind of, kind of furthers it. Everything's fun. Middle and elementary schools got competitive about reading during the annual Battle of the Books. These tournaments pit schools against one another to see who can answer the most questions correctly about the seven books they read. The middle school competition took place at Lake Taylor School, where the home team battled through the preliminary rounds before defeating Blair Middle School in the final. It was good. This is my first year, and I really had more help from my team and my coach, Mr. Williams. And I think it's overall great because like, this is like my first thing in school. Since I'm new to this school, it's my first big thing that I've done in the school, so I feel great. A few days later, Elementary students met at the Academy for Discovery at Lakewood for their Battle of the Books competition. After several matches, Taylor Elementary defeated the Academy for Discovery to win the fourth grade title. And the Academy for Discovery won the fifth grade trophy when they defeated Little Creek Elementary. Both teams were extremely excited and a little amazed that they won. 
really surprised, but also like it feels really good because like we worked really hard for this and we got it. Honestly, I wouldn't have like been reading this much if I hadn't been in this, so I'm glad for that. But yeah, read a lot, and we had like practices after school, so that helped. I honestly didn't think we were gonna win against Little Creek. They were really good, and um, they were they were hitting the buzzer really fast. We had to read seven books, and I honestly don't know how we remembered them. It's just we studied so much; it was just we knew them all by heart. Students at Booker T. Washington High School got a glimpse of their financial futures thanks to a partnership with the Virginia Cooperative Extension. This reality store assigned students adult backgrounds and then had them go around to various spending categories to figure out how to make their budgets work. The primary goal was to get students interested in financial planning and making good decisions with their money. If you think about today, a lot of adults, we're in trouble. And because of the economy, we want to help them to kind of think um, strategically how they're going to handle their finances in the future. So, you know, when you talk about it in theory, but now they're actually able to apply that theory to practice. They're doing great. They're actually doing great and enjoying themselves while they're writing down how much money they're supposed to have. They're erasing things, changing the cell phone, being first, and like, wait a minute, I have to have a house first. And then they're kind of just making better decisions as they go along. These young people even had some fun learning how to budget for the future. Basically play out like this fairy tale of like living financially and basically not being irresponsible about your money. I think it would really help me. They gave me like uh, proper explanations on like how I can like save money and stuff. Well it's not my first time like trying to figure out how I'm trying to um, deal with my life in the future. Mainly for me I just want to learn how to balance my money properly. You know I don't want to spend it on stuff that aren't necessities that I need because I want to focus on my necessities before before I go to my wants. We put ourselves in the grown-up's position. Um, we either have kids, we're married, our spouse works or not, what we do and how much we get and basically how much money we spend financially. I'm not a grown-up yet. I don't know anything about this. So this is honestly a new experience, and I love new experiences. So this is a really fun for me. Students were able to throw, run, and have fun at Old Dominion University. So today we have the Little Feet Me, and we pair with Special Olympics of Virginia. And we have 15 different elementary schools with a combination of students with and without disabilities so they can have a unified field day and participate in 19 various activities all throughout the SB Ballard Stadium. Softball toss, hockey, and bowling were just a few of the activities students could participate in. A lot of time and planning went into this to make sure students could maximize their experience. We had to use a lot of our school resources of working with our occupational and physical therapists, our assistive technology and speech departments, as well as all the learning support from downtown Norfolk. And then we reached out to all communities out in our area with um, military and any other organizations that would like to come volunteer because without the volunteers we couldn't put this event on. They help run all the stations. Along with the military, the New York Times, Virginia Department of Health, and Norfolk Sheriff's Office were some of the other organizations that volunteered their time and resources. I've always worked with kids ever since I was since I was like a teenager. So coming out here to help out like public school kids, some disabled, some not, it's just amazing and great to do. Having these young students get some exercise and enjoy themselves is just one part of why this event is so important. My big goal for this is that all the kids realize that it doesn't matter their physical ability or intellectual ability that everyone can do anything they put their mind to and that there's no limitations to anyone's athletic or enjoyment level and everyone can just do whatever they want in the world. That there's no limitations to anyone no matter what it may appear to others. Fourth and fifth graders from eight of our schools competed against one another in the Math 24 Challenge on the campus of Norfolk State University. For this unique competition, students must be the first person to come up with an equation using four numbers on a card that equal 24. After several tough matches, this year's winner was thrilled to come out on top. 
I feel amazing right now. Like, like going to the moon for the first time, it was just, it feels just really good. I'm not expecting to win because like, oh, my brother is like a bit better than me. The return of Math 24 after three years gave students a chance to test their math skills while getting to meet and compete against students from different schools. So Math 24 is a creativity game. So they're using their math skills, they're practicing fact fluency, but they're also having fun and creating 24 using four single digit numbers in this case. It's so exciting, we missed it. We missed having the students to be together and to share and to meet each other and then to realize, hey, you're doing some of the same things that we're doing at our school. You can practice your strategies at school, but when you begin to apply them even outside of the walls of the school, it can be fun just to use math. And so, for the record, nerding out is cool in Norfolk Public School. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Birdsong. Thank you, thank you. There's great things happening in Norfolk Public Schools. We're going to move on to Section 3.07. Ms. Tanner, uh, citizens' comments on agenda items only. Um, can you introduce our first speaker? Yes, Madam Vice Chair. For tonight's citizens comments on agenda items only, we have two speakers. Today's speakers have signed up for public comments before the start of today's business meeting. If you would like to provide public comments for agenda items only, you are required to state the agenda items you are addressing prior to providing your public comments at this meeting. When your name is called, please come forward to the speaker's podium. State your name and whether you have a child in Norfolk Public Schools or if you are employed by the district and state your agenda items. One person is to speak at a time. If you are representing a group, state the group's name. You may ask your group members to stand in place to be recognized. Speaking time is limited to three minutes. A timer is set with an alarm that will signify the end of your speaking time. State your position and give facts and other relevant data. Avoid saying anything that identifies students or personnel information about individual employees. Personnel, disciplinary, and confidential matters may be addressed to the school board directly via email at schoolboard at mpsk12.com. Comments should be addressed to the board and not addressed to an individual member. School board members do not respond to public comments at the time they are given, and any written statements or supporting materials should be given to the clerk. Um, Madam Vice Chair, our first speaker for today is Catherine Towler, followed by Diane Bacon. Good evening. Good evening. School board chair today, Ms. Buffalo, board members, Superintendent Birdsong. First, I'd like to say thank you for all you do for our city and for our children. As a proud retiree of Norfolk Public Schools, 39 years of service, I continue to do everything I can to assist with education in the city of Norfolk. I also am a member of Gethsemane Community Fellowship Baptist Church, who partners with Norfolk Public Schools, and we host an adult education class in our church building every Tuesday and Thursday. In addition to that, I'm a Norfolk branch member of the NAACP, and we're interested in what happens to all in the city of Norfolk, and a proud member of the Booger T. Washington class of 1969 and the Concerned Citizens for Booger T. I became aware of some of the dire circumstances in Norfolk when Norfolk lost its accreditation after 100 years of excellence. Yvonne was at the time, Wagner, told me about this situation and there was a group who was coming together to be advocates for Booker T. And we proceeded and we have done that now for I think almost 10 years. Uh, concerned citizen members who are here, would you please stand? Thank you. In the paper just last week, I saw where there was some uh, confusion, as someone said, about the future of Booker T. I remember the 2019 resolution. I was here when that was passed and excited about 
what was about to happen. But in the paper, it said that Booker T would become an Academy of the Arts, and that threw me. Because at no time was I aware that we had made a decision to go in that direction. The arts has not, that particular program has not served us well. That's why we are in the state we are in now. I checked Booker T. Washington on the internet and discovered that we are in the lower first percentile for the country. In Virginia, we're very low. In Norfolk, we're the next to the lowest high school. And I'm asking, why would we continue to go down this road? Our city needs a workforce. Our children deserve a future. And they deserve good paying jobs. And there are jobs all around us. But I work and worship in the inner city. And I see what's happening. I've been at Booker T. I know what's happening. What the road we're on is sinking sand. Please reevaluate. If it takes longer, fine, so be it. If it takes more money, so be it. But come up with something for this city and for our students that's going to be a beam of hope, a light of hope, and will lift not only our children and their families, but will lift this city because we all realize the poverty in Norfolk. And if we don't begin to think big and do something about this, it will just continue to go downhill. Thank you so much, and I know I've extended my time. And not only that, I had to speak from my heart because I rushed out because of uh, couldn't find my keys and left my notes at home. I don't know if you all know what that's like, but yes, you do. But anyway, I could, I would, I refused to go back because I had to check in by seven o'clock so I could speak. But this is so important, and I, I only, only pray at 72 that I will be around <coughs> to see the hope that Booger T is going, going to bring to Norfolk. Thank you. Ms. Bacon. Good evening, everyone. My name is Archie Diane Bacon, and I am a proud graduate of Booger T Washington High School. Graduated in 1968. Um, in the absence of Glennis Mason, who is the PTA president of Booker T. Washington High School, I bring you her comments. Greetings to Superintendent Birdsong and to our esteemed school board members. A few years before the pandemic, I spoke at the school board meeting in reference to the maintenance and repairs that Booger T required. The, BT, the, BT, the PTA thanks the board for addressing and correcting some of the concerns presented at that time. Later, I worked with the BTW Advisory Task Force through research and discussions <coughs> with the Norfolk Public School personnel, local university, representatives, community leaders, BTW parents and students, the committee made recommendations <coughs> in reference to BTW's current programming. The committee's report was concise and offered a workable solution for suggested renovations, equipment, and resources to accommodate an arts curriculum. In addition, the committee discussed the possibility of BTW offering courses in science, technology, engineering, and math. These programs would, be, would enable students to have not only arts as a focal point, but also other opportunities for educational growth and job readiness. Alternative means other than academic curriculum in the school would help many students who are not great standardized test takers. Can you tell me how an art curriculum prepares BTW students on the track of being productive citizens in the society with great paying jobs? Also, 
the Tidewater area has a wealth of opportunities for educational and internships with industries throughout the area, such as the shipyard and the longshoremen. As a former uh, Norfolk Public School employee, graduate and parent, I know the importance of a solid education. Like the other four high schools, BTW needs to have a specialty that will provide an educational curriculum that will help students develop their skills, talents, and education, whether it is for continuing education or the workforce. Therefore, I respectfully respectfully ask that the school board conducts a feasibility study that includes a STEM educational curriculum. A STEM curriculum will continue Thank to provide. Ms. Diane, uh, do you have more? One sentence. One sentence. Can you wrap that up for me, please? Thank End you. of the sentence. A STEM curriculum will continue to provide an arts program and address other academic possibilities for students. Thank you. Thank you. you. Madam Vice Chair, this concludes our speakers for agenda items only. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. We will move on to section four, the consent agenda. Board members, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I'd like to move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for the uh, approve the consent agenda. Ms. Tanner, please call the roll. Basin? Aye. Buffalo? Aye. Campson? Aye. Clanton? Aye. Gabriel? Aye. Jordan? Aye. Thank you, team. We're going to move to Section 5, Discussion and Decision Agenda. First is 5.01, Monthly Financial Report. Dr. Bursong? Yes. Um, Mr. Jenkins is going to join us at the podium, our Chief Finance Officer. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Buffalo. Uh, Dr. Birdsong and members of the school board. Uh, this evening, I'll review the financial report for the month of March. Uh, the March report, uh, we're now nine months into the year. Uh, that began on July 1st, 22. Um, as with previous reports, this uh, report reflects activity from July until March 31st. And, and it includes transactions re recorded on or before April 4th. Uh, the general fund collections or money coming in totaled uh, $266.6 million. This is 69.6% .6 of our $383 million general fund budget. During the same, periods, uh, same period in the previous two years, our collections were just a little smaller, 67.5%. On page three of the highlights, uh, we provide a graph of revenue and spending to date. Uh, by the end of March, we had either spent or encumbered $257.2 million, which is two-thirds of our budget. Uh, revenue, as you can see, again, is $266.6 million. In the previous two years, uh, spending at this same point in time uh, ranged between 64 and 65 percent of the budget. So we're spending this year is just a little higher than the previous two years. Page four includes uh, two graphs, one for revenue and one for spending. Um, you'll note that, um, let's see, the graph presents monthly revenue and spending for the current and two previous years. The monthly budget trend appears in the green background. Uh, revenue collections so far this year are slightly ahead of trend. Spending in March exceeded the trends primarily because there were three pay dates in March. <coughs> that only happens twice a year. Uh, more detailed information on revenue and spending is available starting on page 5. Turning to page 16, we report two budget transfers, uh, both exceeding $50,000 during the month. <coughs> the first was a transfer of $666,100 from the building improvement area to building repairs. The second was to transfer savings on athletic stipends to uh, small equipment accounts for the replacement of <coughs> middle school football helmets. The quarterly update for categorical grants appears on page 17, uh, actually starts on page 17. As of March 30th, uh, 258, point, uh, $258 million of federal and state grants were in progress. We had spent 
or issued contracts for 60% of the awards, leaving about 40%. All funds have been spent from the Coronavirus Aid and Recovery and Economic Security Act, also known as CARES, before the, de the deadline. You, those are not on the report any longer. Uh, we've also spent a large portion of our award for the uh, Coronavirus Relief and Response Supplemental Appropriation, uh, which was uh, approved by Congress um, in, I've got March 20, but excuse me, it was actually in December. As to, at the end of March, we had spent uh, or encumbered 81% of uh, the 51.4 million that had been awarded. This uh, grant remains available until September of 2023. We also received $120 million of grants under the American Recover, excuse me, American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA. This was approved by Congress in March of 2021. Most of the funds uh, remaining of, remain, most of these funds are still available uh, through September of 2024. Um, at the end of March, we had, ins we had spent or issued contracts for $41.8 million or 41% of the ARPA award, leaving 71 million still available. We continue to spend both uh, the art. We continue to spend the ESSER two or um, CRRSA funds and the ARPA funds in accordance with plans approved by the Virginia Department of Education. You will also note in this packet uh, there is a report on um, a quarterly report on grant gifts and donations that we received between January first and March thirty one. These are generally private donations made to individual schools. During the latest quarter, we received $75,975 from 19 donors. Uh, most of the, grant, uh, the gifts were for the purchase of instructional supplies for schools. Mr. Sure, uh, Buffalo, that concludes my comments on the March report. If you or the board have questions, I'll be glad to try to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. School board, you heard the report. Does anyone have any questions? Ms. Bassine? Yes. <clears throat> um, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Um, on page 16, um, related to the budget transfers, yes. um, can you can you expand a little bit on um, the the funds that have uh, that are being transferred from uh, the building improvements to repair? Aren't they in the same? Fund? Wouldn't they be in the they're, same fund? They're in the same fund, but they're in different um, functions. So one is under um, facility improvements, um, but the money, we needed more money in the building repairs account, operations and maintenance. So this appears as a transfer because your budget is adopted according to, um, the, I think it's six or seven actual functions, the general fund. Uh, we have instructional services. Um, administration <coughs> tenants and health, transportation and, and uh, operations and maintenance. Those are the primary four and there are a couple of others. So we're moving money from improvements, uh, facility improvements to operations and maintenance. So it's actually in the same department, but rather than um, we, were, we were more, we were hopeful that we would do more uh, purchasing of things that had a longer life, but we've been spending we've had to spend more money on repairs. Okay, so they're in the same department, but yes. in different. Right, so okay. it's it's very similar, but it's in a different <coughs> function, and that's why it's appearing here. That's why it's appearing here, okay. Because I, I get, okay. Because it sounds like the same thing, but that's why I was trying to figure out because why we were seeing that kind of transfer in this report. And then the second piece, of my question is, you know, we see every month, you know, kind of uh, quite a bit of capital improvement, uh, you know, the budget transfers <coughs> related to capital improvement. And so, you know, it makes me ask the question, like, you know, how we're doing in terms of predicting our needs around capital improvement and how we're budgeting well, we uh, have we that. have a separate budget on cap for capital right, improvement. Right, that I know, in, right. Which is not included here. Right. <coughs> Uh, so this is, it's similar to capital improvements, but it's in the operating budget. Right. And we have, I, um, we had a couple of million dollars, I believe. Um, I'd have to look at the exact amount. Um, but we have 
we have spent more on operations and we hoped to spend um, and it's been necessary to transfer some funds from uh, cap from the facility improvement account um, we had originally budgeted for capital outlays within the operating budget 3.28 <coughs> million um, but um, and we have spent uh, nearly 200,000 and we have purchase orders outstanding of a million too but we've had to transfer a lot of it to the repair area okay so okay okay um, thank you for that clarification uh, my next question um, and before I go on because I'm going to go on to the grants uh, piece does but I wanted to give anyone a chance if if anyone has um, questions related to the other portion of the monthly financial report before I go to the grant. Does it, Mr. Jordan? It, just, just to piggyback uh, what Ms. Bassine said related to the transfers, um, the contracted services, are those services that we are literally contracting out to vendors to, to perform yes, tasks? Yes, sir. And I will say related to that, we have a lot of openings in our school plant facilities so we have to contract yeah. more because we that's don't where have I was people go. to do the turn the wrenches and, right that's going that was going to be my next question if that that's may be part, part of what's driving it yes and then um and then in terms of the the repairs then that we are uh contracting out can you just give a couple of examples of of what those may be would you Mr. Finley, would you come to the podium, please? Excuse me. We've had to process 1,100 um, work orders for plumbing fixtures, um, and we've had to process over 1,100 work orders for HVAC fixes, and those are currently being served by our outside contractors, as you just heard, because of our staff shortages in our plumbing and our HVAC uh, departments. And are you seeing that just as a result of um, old systems that just happen to be failing around the same time, and that's what's driving what what you're seeing? I would say as as the majority, yes, sir. Okay, All right, thank you, Ms. Bassine. Does anyone else have questions? Then we'll go back. Okay, Ms. Bassine. Okay, um, thank you, Ms. Ms. Moore Buffalo. Um, so my questions around uh, the the quarterly grant status report. And uh, Mr. Jenkins, I'm not sure if uh, you or Dr. Birdsong might be better equipped to answer this question, but um, so related to what is remaining um, in the CARES Act, so there's nearly, I guess nearly rounding up 10 million in the CARES Act that with the end date of um, September 2023. Um, do you have any information on what initiatives we have planned to uh, spend that on and <coughs> how we're using, how those initiatives are gonna advance student achievement, student outcomes? Um, there, are two, uh, there are two primary areas. Uh, okay. There's. There's a lot of different categories, but the two pri are the, the two large ones that are remaining are one those that address um, what the federal government would call learning loss, or we would try we would refer to as uh, trying to do accelerate students. Uh, so there are summer programs planned. There are also t um, tutoring pl uh, programs and uh, support. Uh, so and and our plan is to continue these for the life of these grants. So um, we are. On this, on the CRSA, I'd say we are where we about where we should be. There's also a fair amount of money that was uh, we had appropriated out of CRSA, 15 million dollars to replace heating and cooling units in, in uh, schools that were in dire need, partly because of the repairs, partly because they didn't bring fresh air into the classrooms, which is essential in order to reduce um, harmful. Um, bacteria or germs, things that cause COVID. Um, so that is those um, that spending is underway. Uh, it has a long lead. Uh, I think projects. Uh, I think most of the projects are out of the design. 
I'm getting a, sh a sh nod from Mr. Fraley here. Okay. Uh, a lot of the materials have been per have been ordered, uh, and installation is is remaining to be done. Okay, so that'll be pulling from the funds that are remaining. That's going to pull most okay. of the funds that are remaining. Okay, and then same question for the ARPA funds of this. Um, I guess I mean I know some of these extend out to uh, December and September 2024, but you know, can you talk a little bit about um, again it's, the initiatives? It's really the same answer. Uh, the okay. numbers are bigger. Uh, and there's more projects, especially in the heating and cooling area. But okay. the entire grant was more than twice the size of the a, um, the CRSA grant. Um, we still have another year, not quite a year and a half, um, and our plans are to spend all of those funds in advance of the deadline. It's not an easy lift either. I'm sorry? It's not an easy lift either. I mean, it, it, these are larger words. Right, right, uh, absolutely. And that's, you know, as, as the board knows, you know, it's some, something that, you know, I would like for us to also talk about is, um, and this is like a board discussion really, is, you know, talking about the initiatives and how we monitor student outcomes and student achievement to see how, um, you know our students are improving and how we're advancing student outcomes for those for those funds that are being allocated toward initiatives with direct impact to students so that's um, something I know we're gonna keep our eye on so noted Ms. Bassane thank you for your questions Madam is there any Mr. Clanton yeah just to, to piggyback on particularly with the um, <clears throat> the HVAC um, updates um, one of the things that I know that many of us who had had conversations with Congressman Scott, who was instrumental as um, chair um, at that time of the House Education and um, Labor Committee, um, said that he would be watching very closely to local districts and to what they were doing with their plans. Um, one of the conversations um, in, with Congressman Scott was about um, HVAC improvements, um, that there are studies that show that the quality of air um, inside our classrooms greatly improves the learning environment for our students. Um, and so uh, I just want to say that I commend the administration for looking at that. We know the age of many of our buildings, but the things that we can do in the instrumental between the time for when we can actually put a new building in place, um, that this is an action, um, and I think the work that you've done, Mr. Freely, um, that we can do to improve the learning environments for our students, that that's just as critically important than what's also happening in the curriculum that's being provided in instruction. Thank you. Chair. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Clanton. Mr. Jordan? Yeah, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Clanton raising that point. And uh, I guess what I would like to have the, the board and administration consider uh, maybe for the next quarterly report, if we can uh, delve a little deeper. I mean, the, paying attention to the finances obviously is important, but um, to some extent, I forgot what the percentage is that um, that we are focusing on uh, unfinished learning and um, accelerated learning. And I recognize that in some cases, it might be another two, three years before we see the impact of the investments and <coughs> initiatives that are taking place today. So what well, I would like for us to consider, and, and I think we should, in my opinion, really take an opportunity, uh, perhaps at the next quarter, to drill down and do it in a work session, not you know, not with Mr. Mr. Jenkins in the, in the business setting, but really have a conversation around uh, where we are seeing impact with the uh, investments that we've received around uh, student acceleration and, and unfinished learning. Um, I know that, you know, part of we just went through with the, the budget preparation funds that are being set aside for for tutoring beyond the end of the of the program of the of these funds when these funds run out but really try to understand how we're impacting uh, children's uh, performance uh, where we may have some additional challenges when the funds run out so that if we're in areas where we're seeing success how do we sustain that success in air if there are areas where we're not seeing success then you know what do we what do we do about that but 
I would really appreciate it if the if the board and the administration would really consider us um, really just focusing on whatever that percentage is that we've identified is designated for unfinished learning and, and accelerated learning to get a good sense of how our children are doing, what's really working, and uh, and to set us up then for longer term discussions so that when those funds run out, how do we find ways within our current process to sustain what's what's working and is and is uh, having positive impact on our on our student outcomes? Thank you. Any other questions? I have a comment, Mr. Jordan. Um, I agree because you know I said uh, budget talks are continuous all year, so we can get a grasp on what's working. Mm -hmm. We can um, start talking about how do we fund that when the, these grants run out. So ongoing talk, and I love it about the budget. So with all that said, we don't have any more questions. Um, may I have a motion to approve the monthly financial report? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we approve the monthly financial report subject audit. Thank you, Mr. Clanton. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Campson. Ms. Tanner, please call the roll. Basine? Aye. Buffalo? Aye. Campson? Aye. Clanton? Aye. Gabriel? Aye. Jordan? Aye. Thank you for that vote. We're going to move on to 5.02 School Board Advisory Committee Applications. Dr. Birdsong. Um. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Buffalo. So um, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Pohl, Dr. Pohl, Dr. Pohl, Dr. James Pohl, to uh, come to the podium and um, address any other questions that the board may have regarding the closed session information that we discussed around advisory boards. Okay, board, we had this discussion in closed session. Is there any additional questions? Well, Dr. Pohl, I think you uh, informed us all. So, well, well, Ms. Well, Buffalo, if, okay. if, if we could just take a moment and if Dr. Pohl would be willing to you know, take a minute and just explain the process okay. that we went through. For the viewing so audience. The, for the, well, just for the benefit of what we're doing and why we're making the recommendations that we're making. Sure, absolutely. So um, annually as a school board, um, you guys look at applicants for your four advisory committees, the gifted school health, um, career and technical education, and um, special education advisory committees um, each year. Uh, soon after winter break, we open up the application window, and then each committee leadership team vets the applicants and makes recommendations from those applicants to the school board. Um, and there are two recommendations. One is if someone maybe wasn't as active on the committee, um, and the other is for the new applicants to fill the spots. And these committees hold from 20 to 25 community members, business partners, to help to lead the work of the uh, school board and, and act as an advisory committee. Um, and tonight during executive session, um, the applicants were presented uh, to the board um, for recommendation for the next three years um, to be active on those committees, ex barring two recommendations that were for one year extensions. I move that we approve the applicants presented. Second. Thank you, Dr. Uh Gabriel, Mr. Clanta, any discussion? Uh, uh, just a just a comment, and I feel confident that we would all share uh, just the point of gratitude to all the individuals who serve on our advisory committees and the work they do, and, and how vital it is uh, for us. And thank those who took the time to respond to the call to to serve and. Uh, Oftentimes, there are far more uh, applicants than there are vacancies, which I think is a great thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we appreciate, at least I know I do, I'll just speak for my, I, I appreciate the fact that um, that we do have the opportunity to hear from the committees in terms of recommendations for individuals to serve and just would like to thank the administration for their efforts in uh, working with the committees to get the applications out there and to make sure it's well known, social media, newsletters, everything that I know I see. I'm sure it's probably robocalls too. I, I cut my robocalls off, so I don't, <laughs> I don't get that anymore. I get it via email. It comes via email. It comes via email. But, uh, but I just wanted to, to 
offer uh, appreciation and gratitude for those who have been serving and those who are willing to serve. <coughs> Appreciate those comments, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jordan. So we have a, a motion and sec. Oh, Ms. Bassine, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I, I too want to offer my, my gratitude. And one question I, I often get um, from uh, citizens who serve on the committee, you know, sometimes and sometimes they get frustrated um, because they are not always certain how uh, their work and commitment uh, to the committees becomes realized. In our in our board work, and um, you know they they give us their annual reports at the end of the year, and with those annual reports comes recommendations, and those recommendations, oftentimes, you know they they inform our policies, they inform our budgets, they inform um, the questions that we ask, they inform uh, a lot of the work that we do, and sometimes it doesn't you know it's not always seen right away but it is ingrained in you know the daily uh, conversations I think in our work sessions and our um, so again you know just really appreciate the hard work of all the citizens that are stepping up to the plate to, to help us do our work um, and so I just I just wanted to say that that to say thank you so that's it Thank you, Ms. Basine, for your comments. And with that said, Ms. Stanner, would you please call the roll? Yes. Basine? Aye. Buffalo? Aye. Campson? Aye. Clanton? Aye. Gabriel? Aye. Aye. And Jordan. thank you also for the volunteers. I agree. <coughs> Aye. Very good. All straight. Thank you, team. We're going to move on to Section 5.03, Booker T. Washington High School Feasibility Study. Dr. Bird. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Buffalo. Um, I'm going to ask um, Rick Fraley, our Chief Operations Officer, and Mike Ross with HBA Associates to approach the podium, please. As you know, we had a work session a couple of weeks ago um, asking clarity from the board regarding our work and our work moving forward. And so um, Mr. Ross and Mr. Fraley stand by to ask answer additional questions if needed. Okay, school board members, the floor is open for any additional questions surrounding the Booker T. Washington vision for the future. Mr. Clinton has his Mr. hand Clinton. up. Oh. Have to keep no, I get it. Yeah, it I know about that seat down there. Um, not necessarily a question, um, uh, but um, I've gone back and I'm, I appreciate the um, concerned citizens coming in, providing comments there, because it just reaffirmed um, that there is a need for clarity in the community. Um, there's a great deal of work that's taken place, um, and from the time from when this resolution and I presented it back in uh, 2019, um, we, of course we had the pandemic and it kind of threw things off, but I was excited um, when Dr. Bertong came back along with working um, with Mr. Fraley um, and team to get this thing back on and going. I appreciate the conversation that we had with my colleagues um, two weeks ago to really talk about that. And I think that what's gotten missed out of there, um, because yes, I put together an advisory task force because that was one of the first things that I said when I got on the board because there was so much um, just talk and discussion in the community about Booker T and the lack of things that, were, um, that weren't taking place there. And I'm appreciative of the capital improvements and things that are on the way. I've driven by the old um, driver's ed course and see all the materials there for the new roof that's happening. All the things that we talk about um, are finally coming to fruition. Um, but I sat here and I began to doodle um, and write out here uh, for something in regards clarity. And that was with the um, whereas statement in the original, um, one of the whereas statements in the original resolution which says, whereas it is a desire of the school and surrounding community to ensure that Booker T. Washington High School has a vibrant and competitive academy that will retain and attract a diverse group of students from across the city. And with that presentation that was mentioned, that was presented, talked about the Academy for the Arts, but it also provided other VDOE approved um, courses um, throughout uh, from the Department of Education regarding STEM opportunities. And as I stated in the last work session, I think that when we say competitive and looking at other things, it's looking at taking it um, beyond, not just looking at the Academy, because at the time it's always, it's been the Academy for the Arts there, but how do we improve that and how do we make it competitive and how do we attract 
attract students from across the city there. Um, and so, Madam Chair, when it's time, I'd like to actually offer um, an, um, a motion um, to really clarify that, um, to include um, what had been presented, because I think um, what we've said is that the work is been there, you're done, we're ready to go. Um, but I think that we just need to affirm um, that uh, the STEM component and anything else that the, um, that the steering committee um, finds that could make this competitive and make it a great um, academy, that those things be included in the feasibility study. Um, and I think that that sends a strong direct um, message back to the community that we are um, affirming the work, that the work is happening there. And ultimately, um, and I think also in that conversation, we said that we wanted to open it up to ensure individuals from across the city um, were also had an opportunity to sit on that advisory task force um, to send that message to the community that we are committed um, to Booker T. Washington and committed it to our students to provide them a high quality public education um, and that any student from across the city can do, um, would be able to be attracted to come to um, uh, whatever the new academy would be. I'm not, and that was the other thing, not to be so restrictive and prescriptive, um, but to allow the community to advise us. That's also in this resolution that we approved to provide the comments to us, um, provide the feedback in that feasibility study um, so that we would be able to take that up as a board um, and to be able to act on those, um, those recommendations. So I'm just gonna state what I have here. I'm not gonna put it in official form, but I want my colleagues to hear what I'm thinking. Um, I'm looking at, I move that. The board affirm the work in direction um, that uh, thus far towards completing a fa phase one feasibility for Booker T. Washington High School. Further, that the board encourages the review and inclusion of you know, any STEM curriculum opportunities um, as one method of addressing the whereas statement from, um, from the Booker T. Washington board approved resolution from December 18th to 2019 um, to ensure that Booker T. Washington High School has a vibrant and competitive academy that will retain and attract a diverse group of students from across the city. Um, I'm not putting that out as an official motion, but this is the direction I'm thinking um, that I, I like to, to put out there. But I wanted to continue the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clanton. Any more questions around Booker T. Washington? Go, go ahead, Mr. Jordan. Yeah. Mr. Jordan. I, um, I have a question. Don't have a question. I, I appreciate um, what Mr. Clanton has, has, is, is thinking. Um, I guess my, 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 so at the end of the work session and, uh, I think, uh, both Mr. Clinton and I were talking about the, the steam piece and I know it's been referenced. Um, I, I, I didn't anticipate that we were going to have a vote tonight. I mean, when it, you know, I knew we, we left, when I left the meeting, so what, yeah, but. but I would, I would, um, as one who, um, uh, makes all kinds of mistakes and uh, uh, that have to be corrected. Um, I, would, I would say, can we take, um, Mr. Clanton, what you're offering, um, maybe talk about it just a little bit more in a work session in that um, um, So, so even as, as as you know, I didn't vote for a resolution at the time, and uh, part part of that rationale for me then was there was a lot of stuff going on. It, some of the speakers mentioned, uh, you know, the concerned citizens coming for ten years. I've heard all ten years, <laughs> and um, um, and it is accurate that um, concerns were brought about the uh, some of the conditions. Uh, you know, back in 2000 and what was that, 13, 14, uh, maybe a little bit later, uh, about issues of, of mold and, and other concerns that were that were brought forward. Um, the reason why I'm um, we know we have high schools that have uh, academies. Um, I, I like to get a better sense of. Um, you know, what size academy are we looking at? Something else that's, that to me has significant impact that drove some of the angst uh, that I heard in the community and many meetings I attended and phone calls and conversations was uh, as we were having conversations around uh, 
uh, attendance zones that at that time that was uh, pre St. Paul's uh, quadrant or whatever they, what's it called down St. Paul's area whatever I, forgive me St. Paul's community uh, the, the redevelopment of uh, of Tidewater Park and um, which is in the Booker T. Washington footprint and I would suggest that we as part of this also need to just take a moment and uh, be clear on um, impact of uh, of the St. Paul's area uh, if it's going to remain in the Booker T. Washington footprint uh, as I've shared before I think that uh, when you look at where children were once located in uh, Tower to Park where they've been uh, relocated I think is important for us to have a grasp on as well as the likelihood of who may be returning and we know that the um, when the CNI grant that the city put forward for the redevelopment uh, to the best of my knowledge um, Young Park and Calvert uh, uh, may be further down the line and uh, and that the plan goes all the way up to Huntersville and so um, looking at uh, the attendance the enrollment um, is something I think we should consider and then um, also I'm not so sure for me personally that it should just be an academy. Maybe this is an opportunity for us to do something a little different and make whatever the feasibility study comes up with, make it comprehensive so that rather than, you know, others can still apply to attend, but maybe we can reconsider the concept and have a fully comprehensive high school with whatever theme and focus that we believe is going to be attractive and um, serve students well and, and serve the, the business community well. So I just say that maybe at a work session, if we're going to revisit this to some degree, um, if the board is willing, that that might be another factor that, that we can consider. And my last comment, which I've shared for years and uh, just want to share it again um, to me Booker T Washington's proximity to Norfolk State is just totally underappreciated in my opinion and um, I can remember uh, one Super Bowl Sunday I can't remember what year it was but I remember driving back from DC and walking with uh, some others from Booker T down to the McDemon Center and you know clean rooms and optical engineering and the Wilder Center and there's so much that Norfolk State offers that I think as a community we underappreciate that the um, that the concept of uh, not just dual enrollment but dual collaboration and with the proximity of Jay Cox and Richard Bowling and Ruffner and Chesterfield in its proximity to Norfolk State, to me, it is the one area in this city from birth all the way through at least, what, 27 years, whatever it takes to get your EDD or PhD or advanced degree, that we really do have an opportunity to have this um, uh, educational and entrepreneurial hub that not only can be transformative for our students but transformative for the community around it. Uh, you look at how ODU has grown with its uh, with its village and the partnerships that it has with Norfolk Public Schools and our in the elementary schools that surround uh, ODU. I just think we really have an, an opportunity here beyond just academies and beyond just, if you go back and look at when we were talking about the facilities conditions index and we started with renovation and replacement. Well, if we're gonna renovate Booker T, then maybe we should renovate it comprehensively and, and do it in a way that has this alignment from, uh, 
from from cradle to if you watch Norfolk State, sometimes they have uh, graduates who are in their 80s and 90s who are that committed to furthering their education. So I just want to put that out there again. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Jordan, for your comments. Dr. Uh, uh, Gabriel. Sure. <clears throat> so are we going to have a motion on the floor for this, or should I – should I comment first and then we have a motion on the floor or what is we're the not process? voting tonight no. we are not going to vote no. tonight okay okay so then I'll just say this um, this uh, as being on the board for many 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 years I have seen spoken with walked with yard sailed with perf attended performances uh, with the uh, wonderful wonderful advocates for Booker T. Washington. And um, it is amazing the amount of dedication and spirit that is alive um, from the very young to the very old. I remember at the dedication ceremony when they got the historical plaque, um, how many uh, graduates were there f for many years. And I will say that the direction that the board has taken has gone in a direction of per putting actions in uh, to the words that we have spoken. Actions in the form of highly qualified program director. Actions in the form of offering m more and advanced classes and studies. Uh, I'm just thinking of just a couple of the ones. The digital technology with all of the MacBooks. The dance studio renovation. The entire renovation of the auditorium. Um, we are now hosting district, all city, middle school, band, and orchestra competitions at Booker T. Washington High School. Um, that's just program. Uh, um, from the facility standpoint, an entire roof replacement, uh, windows, electrical, HVAC, which are hitting at the concerns that have been, <clears throat> you know, definitely on our radar, but definitely on the radar of the students and the staff and the individuals who are in the classrooms working and teaching with the children every day. So there has definitely been progress made. And so I, I thought you know, with the reason as to why it was brought back to the board, I thought this was a, a, a way of renewing our vows, so to speak, to the commitment of what we were going to be doing for Booker T. Washington High School. Um, and I, I do appreciate the whereas statement where it says it is the desire of the school and surrounding community to ensure that Booker T. Washington High School has a vibrant and competitive academy. The basis for any academy is a strong academic program. No matter what the academy is, you have to have strong English, strong math, strong extracurriculars, wonderful athletic opportunities just, just to bring the kids in. And so, and that's, those are the foundational building blocks that we have for all of our academic programs. I know when I have attended the graduation ceremonies for the IB program and the medical master's program, not all of the kids are going into medicine. Not all of them are going into the, the culture arts through IB. Some of them are going into music. Some of them are going into um, different opportunities. And I will tell you that sometimes a background in the arts is actually a wonderful background. I have many colleagues. They didn't ma major in biology. They majored in art history. And they're some of the best practicing physicians. Uh, so I will just say that I, I don't un Why are we not voting tonight? Because we put it on the uh, agenda for further discussion. Okay, to get so it wasn't a decision free. item. It was just for discussion. It's just, yeah. Okay. And it's, okay. it's not vote for, required. Okay. No, well, I'm, I'm fully committed to the work that has been done, to the work moving forward. Um, I love the idea of strengthening the partnership between Norfolk State and Booker T and, and all of the schools. I, I think that that commitment is there. I think there's things that are happening. We just saw how they hosted the 24 mathematics competition at Norfolk State. All of that can, can be done. So my commitment's there. I, I don't have a problem with the direction that we're moving in. And I think it's good for students and, and staff and for the program. Ms. Bassine, then Mr. Jordan. Ms. Bassine, Mr. Jordan, and well, we're going to do Campson. Yeah, yeah. Bassine, Campson, then Mr. Jordan. Um, 
Well, first, uh, I appreciate uh, Mr. Clanton um, bringing up uh, um, the inclusion of the STEM piece. Um, and I really think that what you're, what you're suggesting and uh, what Mr. Jordan is suggesting is all in alignment um, and also is consistent with, I guess, what my position has been whenever we've talked about any academy in our school district and I think I've you know over the years and a lot of time has been the um, basis for sometimes why I voted have voted against some of the decisions around individual schools because for me it's a big picture like what is the big picture what is the impact if we do this one school here what is the impact on this other school for instance with Ruffner what's the impact on Southside STEM Academy you know it's like so it's um, for me, it is, it is important that we be intentional. These are great ideas. And these are, I mean, we owe it to our students. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to everyone who's working in our district to take the time. <clears throat> um, and that's not to say that we can't move forward with different aspects of, of this, but that we take the time to really develop a comprehensive school-wide academy, not just a piece of it. Um, but a school-wide academy where we know what all the impacts are, what all the, the, the inputs are in terms of, as Mr. Jordan said, what the <laughs> impacts are in terms of who's currently living in that area. There's a lot going on in that area that we don't even, I feel like, really even know what's going on in that area um, and what the impact of that is going to be. And then, you know, from a programmatic standpoint, what can we do, not only in that area, but what are the impacts on our other schools? Um, and what, what, what is our vision overall as a board? And I think we have a lot of, we have, as a board, have a lot of discussions in terms of what's our vision for the district? And what is our board priorities? What are our board priorities and what's our vision? And what, how, how might all of our high schools look? And so, I think we might be putting the cart before the horse if we're talking about, you know, this great, which I think is 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 awesome. You know, we're talking about this one high school, but like let's kind of talk about them all comprehensively and develop great high schools across the board. Um, does that make sense? And take a little take a little time to do that. Yeah. I, I Ms. I'll come Camp back with my Ms. comments. Ms. Campson. Oh, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, people who joined us from the uh, Booker T group. Um, as I listen to you, and I, 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 you, you hit on the point that resonates with me, and that's where we sometimes get lost in the woods and forget to focus on the focus. Mm -hmm. And the focus for me, another lifelong educator, uh, is academics, academics, academics. As a parent and as an educator, that's where I was. And so I appreciate you sharing those thoughts too and, and reminding everyone that we can have wonderful programs at all of our schools. Thank you for that, um, Ms. Bassine. But we need to remember why we have a school. And that's to make sure that we are getting our children ready for their life. And academics has to be the key there. It is the focus. So as we do all of the other things, and of course, as we know, Norfolk Public Schools is very involved with everything. We fed the children of Norfolk during the pandemic. That's who fed them. It was it was this school district. And there and and we provide a lot of support and guidance in all kinds of areas. But in the end, the main reason we're doing all that is to give the foundation for our academic program. That's what a school does. So thank you for, for reminding me and everyone else that we need to always remember to focus on the focus, and that is to provide a high education for all of our children. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campson. Mr. Jordan. No, thank you. I'm sorry, Ms. Clanton. You all. So look, it, I know we've talked about how this doesn't work down there. <laughs> um, Again, I appreciate the uh, 
comments of my colleagues on this one. Uh, Mr. Jordan and myself actually had a very in-depth conversation um, around this, and, and in many cases, um, we actually uh, agree on several things um, more than we disagree on these particular items. Um, but I've often said before um, with this board, um, and with even with the school division, that we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, and I think that um, the reason why I would not delay um, with Booker T. Washington High School and looking at um, an academy as the work that we've done so far is because we've delayed too long on Booker T. Washington High School. And we owe it to the community um, and to the students of Booker T. Washington to keep that focus. Um, but I do agree when Mr. Um, Jordan mentions about a comprehensive high school. But I believe that we have that opportunity when we talk about educational planning and um, what that looks like for the entire division. I think that even looking at the academy um, and what may be coming back as a out of that feasibility study could actually be scaled into a comprehensive school and a comprehensive program. Um, so we can continue the work, continue the direction, and that gives us a basis. Um, and Booker T. Washington then becomes um, a, really our, 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 our model for what could be throughout the entire division. Um, I've often said, and I've been asking for it, and I know it'll come, um, about taking a field trip to look at some programs um, in school divisions, um, such as, and I'll just put it out there, Hampton, who um, decided back in 20, well, before uh, 2015, when they actually implemented it, uh, to move to uh, an opportunity where students could, get, could move into these academies. Um, I feel like we have too many students in what I consider gym pop, who have no sense of direction, no sense of outcome and why they're in school. Um, and so I want to be able to provide students the opportunities that I actually got afforded when I was in a career in technical education course, when I was in music, um, and a lot of those different things. Finding things, just like when I had to answer the questions that my nephew gave me for his senior English class, he had to interview me. And one of his questions was, Uncle C, how do we make school more exciting and interesting for students? We have an opportunity here to change the game in how we provide education to our students. It's not the same thing. We're competing against a multitude of different things. But how do students come in? And I've often said, you know, when they can come out of eighth grade and be able to choose an academy or a program, and I believe that we can have comprehensive high schools, and I think what Hampton's done is they have academies in a comprehensive high school. Um, but I believe the opportunity um, for us as a board is that we can continue to have that conversation through the educational planning that's coming forward. Um, but I think that what we've had in the discussion in the work session and even hearing now, um, I think that the direction you're going in, being able to get that feasibility study will be a um, not only a signal to, to the administration and to our students, but to the overall community that we're holding our commitment. Um, we're bringing something, not just something back, but we're bringing a direction back that can literally set the foundation for everything that we could potentially do here in Norfolk Public Schools. We know we're going to have to do some realignment. We know we're going to have to do some innovative and out of the box type of thinking to be able to do things for, uh, for our students. And so I would encourage not for us to deliver um, we've had almost, what, two, three months here um, where we haven't had that steering committee. Um, I would encourage the administration to get back moving, um, working with the community, that we outreach that net and encourage others to come to the table, um, and that we encourage what's happening there uh, to come back and get on that timeline and present a feasibility study, and encourage my colleagues, and as we begin to look at and planning the agenda and planning the schedule moving forward, that we be intentional about the educational planning discussion that we're going to talk about and utilize this opportunity to ensure that we're going to have something that we can collectively come around um, and including the voices of the community to change how we provide public education in Norfolk Public Schools. Um, and I'm willing to work. Uh, I'm committed to doing that and working with my colleagues um, and looking at finding ways and things that we can agree on um, and move and be focused on those things and the things that we don't agree on that we agree to disagree, but we do what's in the best interest of our students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Mr. Jordan? Yeah, thank you. I just want to clarify, um, I'm not asking that we delay the work. I'm asking that we delay specifics on the <coughs> resolution and be able, I think we should expand the work. So at the previous work session, to me what we are trying to address here is um, uh, being able to share with uh, the administrative team, the North Public Schools team, and the HBA team uh, 
where do we want them to go? And so what I'm trying to say is, as we've learned recently, the whereas is don't, I mean, I know they provide illustration, but the real uh, power, as we know, is in the resolve. And I think the resolve is in the resolution is, is what's underway. What uh, the conversation is, what is it that we are resolving from a feasibility visioning perspective so when that steering committee comes together and as the work goes forward there's greater clarity around what we're trying to get to and I think at least to me that's been the discussion and the debate over arts and CTE and and everything else Um, so I'm just, just simply saying that we could consider as a board broadening both defining and broadening the scope of the feasibility study and then also then use that as a basis for continuing to fund and support it uh moving forward with that uh you know with that with that agreement and that in that support um it's um um so yeah, I, I think we've we've got to be able to define from a engineering perspective uh, what the objective is, so that when the steering committee is together, when the community conversations are occurring, it's clear where we're trying to go. And I thought we were kind of there at the end of the work session, when, even as has been said here before, <coughs> if we're going to do uh, uh, steam or whatever it is, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. If we're going to do that, then we need to be in a position where we can share that with Dr. Birdsong so she can share it with those who are uh, working for her and and consulting to her uh, so that there can be clarity around what we want steering committees, advisory committees, or anybody else to do. And And I'm suggesting that I think we can get there, but... What I what I what I'm trying to avoid is where I, where I felt a little frustration some years ago is I like for the administration to hear us, I like for the administration to come back with the recommendation and the resolution, I like for the board to be able to then act on that resolution that comes from the administration based upon what they've heard from us, what they've have done in terms of the internal committee, what they hear from HBA and then allow us as a board to be able to then support that going forward based upon our, uh, uh, you know, our, our, our support. And I think we're there. I just didn't want to, when I was saying delay, I just didn't want to repeat the process of motions and amendments and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, and we don't have, you know, Dr. Martin here. I still think we can do that and I think we can do it in, in two weeks, uh, but I would think there's an opportunity if Dr. Burson has any questions that she could ask if she has any, so that we're so that she feels comfortable with where she hears we are, and then allow her and her team to come back and make any additional recommendations or come back and tell us we're crazy uh but i don't think we can do all that right that right now would you say mr jordan come back and tell us that we're crazy <laughs> but 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 i but I, I i don't want to um you know for all of us i know it's, it's very very personal and um you know i i, I I'm just gonna speak personally for a moment you know i, I carry this i'm, I'm gonna stop <laughs> uh so I have sit every now and then I go through files and I come across papers, and and so I came across papers from 1964, the best Booker T committee, and so when I you know in the same conversations that we're having in 2023, folks were having in 1963 and 1953, and uh, in 2003 and 2013. And so I just want us to have this opportunity um, here, uh, and, and Dr. Burson teases me about it, to really be bold and to, and to have this 7-0 vote in support of what we've 
are discussing, what we're hearing from the community, and what Dr. Birdsong can present to us to really be transformational with this effort. And, uh, and I think we, in my feeling right now, I think we are 98% there, and, and I think we can close the loop in May. I hope, well, I'm speaking for you, but at least for me, that's where I feel we are. Dr. Birdsong, you look like you want to speak. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so if I may, I think this discussion, it, it really doesn't provide the level of clarity that the administration needs. Um, I think it's wonderful discussion, and um, we are so happy to be a part of the discussion, but it does not provide the level of clarity we need in moving forward. I would strongly suggest, suggest that we not delay this work. This work has been delayed long enough. When the board came to, to me in December 2019, there was a very clear understanding of what the mission was for the administration. And based upon that mission, we did put forth an RFP. We were able to secure a contractor. And of course, the pandemic happened. And then um, coming out of the pandemic, we got right back on the work because the work is very, very important to us. And our children at Booker T. Washington High School, they deserve the very best. And as we've been working with um, HBA, um, we firmly believe that they have uh, done a, a good job with, with bringing the community together and ensuring that we will be able to provide the board the level of feedback that you will need in making a decision. But what you need to understand is that the scope of the work for HBA is very limited. And what I'm hearing tonight is now we want a comprehensive school-wide program. And I'm not sure that fits within what was originally written in um, the RFP. And if that is the case, then that would delay the process because we would then have to move forward with another RFP. We would have to put that out for a certain amount of time. We would have to bring a committee together to decide who that contractor would be and start all over with another timeline. And so that's why I'm, I'm very hesitant. I, I did appreciate the, the conversation around, because again, the conversation to me, the direction to me was around Dr. Birdsong. We want the best academy at Booker T. Washington High School around performing and visual arts. That was the direction to me. Perhaps that wasn't communicated well through board meetings and such, but that was the clear direction provided to me. And based on that direction, the administration moved forward with the work. So everything that's being discussed now, again, is wonderful and, and great, and it's the board's decision regarding what we need to do moving forward. But I do want to caution you that if you go in another direction, the steps that we need to take I've outlined them for you. So that would, again, delay the process. We don't have a, a problem with putting out another RFP, but I, I just want you to know clearly where we are and how a change in direction would, would cost us more time and moving the effort forward. And additionally, we've invested, we've invested a great deal of, again, human resources, financial resources, et cetera, et cetera. We've invited the community in. The community has been wonderful. They've been coming in. They've been providing their very authentic feedback for us to, to gather and to finally make a recommendation to the board. So I need to hear from the board because it's maybe clear 98%, Mr. Jordan, as you said to the board, but it is not, it's still unclear to Ms. me. Fair. <clears throat> Ms. Buffalo, if, if I can ask a question. Ahead, Mr. Uh, because I just, I just heard some confusion, um, and unfortunately, Dr. Birdsong, because even though we had the exchange with Mr. Jordan, myself talking about a comprehensive, mm -hmm. I made the comment of stating that we could still move forward with an academy that could potentially be scaled up to a comprehensive high school. So my question back to you, because you, you have the, the contract, HBA, um, and what we have right now, and the discussion that you're hearing, and what you've been charged with, when do we begin to come outside of that scope of what you're able to do and to continue to work with the community? Okay. We've always interpreted the RFP to be a combination of looking at what's the best arts, performing arts and visual arts academy that we can provide in the context of a comprehensive high school, like a school within a school. 
Um, to me, that's always meant integration mm -hmm. and interdisciplinary learning. And I think if you think back to some of the things we, we showed during the stakeholder workshops, it's not just art, it's arts and math, it's art and science, it's art and technology. All those things come together to provide interdisciplinary project-based learning. And to the extent that you take that, it can, it can start out as a, an academy, school within a school, and it can grow to a comprehensive high school. I don't, I don't see this as a major scope change in the RFP. It's, it's a little bit of a swerve. We probably need to go back and do a little bit more research <laughs> on STEAM academies, which we've already started, and present that to the committee so that we can all, because we, we, we did, we created a very large database of exemplary comprehensive arts programs and also arts programs within comprehensive schools. But I think we also owe it to ourselves now to at least look at what are the exemplar programs out there, facilities out there that, that are a little bit more STEAM integrated approach and bring that into the conversation. And I don't, I don't see that as a, a do-over. I think that's a, a little bit of a swerve. I, that's so it's still within the context of the resolution. W would you say that it's still within the context of the resolution? Not a comprehensive <laughs> my, my, if, if, if I may. I can, I can, well, I can tell you what, how, what I read into the RFP. Okay. I, yeah, the only reason why I was, I, I don't want to, put uh, ourselves in a position where it seems like we are publicly negotiating a, a contract. <laughs> it's why I was, was speaking up. Yeah. So, um. okay. And I have a, an additional question. Yes, Dr. Then my question is, may we proceed in accordance with the timeline that Mr. Ross provided during the work session? I, I, Ms. Buffalo. Going to the timeline. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm supportive. Of one it. of the things that um, I can tell you will be helpful for me, I'll, and I can just speak for me. So, one of the comments we heard tonight was that uh, that a report was done that had um, recommendations in it around arts and STEM and so forth. I just think it would be helpful to just be able to hear what those recommendations are and, and see those recommendations and how that fits into, because we could be having conversations about something that's already been taken care of, but I'm not sure that all of us have had the benefit of that. And, and so um, I just think that is an important uh, of the of the of the process so miss buffalo if you may, mm -hmm. i'll make sure i share that with the full board tonight um, for those who hadn't gotten it um, that came out of the recommendations from the task force which included cte teachers and, and others okay 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 dr gabriel yes i'm in full support of proceeding with the timeline i'm going to fall back onto my um personality trait test that we did in governance training. <laughs> My personality trait test is one of gathering the evidence, taking action. And I, I am not to the point where I think we were giving clarity to the superintendent. Uh, it was the superintendent and the administration who brought forth the concern to the work session. They obviously needed us to give them direction. We had very good discussion, I thought. And here we are today with n not a good solid direction for them. And we're delaying something that we continue to delay on behalf of our students. And we need to start somewhere. And right now, as we speak, there is teaching and learning taking place in that building. And going back to what Ms. Campson said, it's the academics, the academics, the academics. No matter what academy program we put in there, if we don't have a solid academic foundation, it is all for naught. Mm -hmm. And so exactly. uh, whether it's the performing arts, whether it is a, another shift change that we want to make, which I do not believe that, um, that we can do. And it, and it makes me feel very comfortable that you all can kind of go outside of the boundaries of the visual and performing arts 
as I had understood it to be all along, that you would dive into the math, dive into the science, incorporate how all of that interacts with all of the other items so that the, the students could have a plethora of skills that they can apply to the world of work. Um, but we need to, we need to either, we either need to tell the superintendent what we want, we want a comprehensive school that does this, this, and this, or we either need to say, allow your committee to do the study, come back and bring us a recommendation, and we vote it up or we vote it down. And I just think that we are very confusing in what we are telling the superintendent, telling the administration, and, and that trickles down to the school itself. So I need to know what are we doing? I want to proceed with a timeline, but I need to understand, are we doing a resolution? Are we saying we're good with it? Are we saying we're going comprehensive? I, I need clarity. Well, let me say this. Um, I need clarity too. I hear, go back, bring back a recommendation. <clears throat> My question is, where did this focus of performing arts I hear a uh, superintendent said she was given direction. So my question was, where was that direction given? Was it given by the board in a vote? Yeah. Did you all take a vote to say, we want um, Performing Arts Academy at Booker T. Washington? Did the, did the board vote to go in this direction? The, the only I, I know you all voted on the resolution in December 2019 and went back, watched the meeting, went through board docs, looked for a vote through minutes, and um, didn't see anything. So I guess my big question is, initially, why did uh, the board go in this direction? Why was the superintendent, where did she get this direction from if the board didn't take a vote on what direction you were going to go into? Because for me, performing arts, again, no. I think one of the focuses attract students from across the city. Nah. Okay. No. Booker T deserves a strong instructional program. There are many academies. You can look at Virginia Beach, like Mr. Clanton Hampton. This is a chance for us to think big I, I you know I see I see big picture and this just let's just put something in there and you know see where it falls attitude just bothers me yeah, and so yeah. to move forward I need just like the superintendent needs mm -hmm. clarity First, where did this come from that it was going to be a performing arts? Where did this direction? Because I can't find a I can't find a school board vote on this. Saw the resolution, but the resolution does not state that it's going to be a performing arts mm -hmm. academy. It does not say that. No. It says a mm -mm. vibrant mm -hmm. program to attract students from a diverse students around the city. No one's putting their child on the bus for a performing arts program. Let's just be clear. No. They do it for the governor's school. They, they for the do. They, so that's in, the governor's school. Yeah, that's that, the governor's yeah, school. Yeah, they do it for the governor's that's school. That's the governor's but school. But I do want to address the the, the, the so question about where the comprehensive school came, right. where it came from. If you look at the academic offering mm -hmm. for Booker T. Washington High School in 2019 of an academy, it was the Academy for the Arts. This resolution says the comprehensive study of the school's academic programs and its academy there. Mm -hmm. So at, there wasn't a vote on changing the academy. It says, how do we make this better? So there wasn't anything uh, about the board changing it. It was put it back here. Again, are we going to be prescriptive and say, just like you had said, are we mm -hmm. going to give it boom, 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 or are we going to give it to the feasibility study for them to come back with recommendations? So that's where that came from. Okay. There wasn't a vote of the board. Okay. Um, so in 2019, it was the current program, and when you look at for students who were in there to apply in 2019, it was for the Academy for the Arts. How do we make this better? Well, I, I, I just shared where I'm coming from. I mm -hmm. just think Booker T deserves a very strong academic program. I don't know why performing arts always land, you know, um, it, it's just frustrating to me. It, it really is. And again, we have neighboring school divis divisions have dynamite um, uh, programs. We do too. We, we do too. We do too. You know, I, yeah. But it's just, it's just, I, yeah, 
That's just where I stand. And I, I hear you, Mr. Clanton. I hear you. And, and believe me, I wouldn't have invested all of all of the investments that we've made um, at Booker T if that was not the clear direction given to me and to the administration. Well, I, I'll, I'll say this then, for me, and I, I'm and I'm speaking for me, but I, I'm sure where a lot of this confusion is that it it needs to be stated somewhere that we're going to. I know it's expansion, but what does that look like? I guess is what I'm saying. And um, as you said, you did wrote some things down to, to expand on that um, resolution that may help put it in writing um, as we move forward. But I do um, believe that, um, again, Booker T. Washington deserves a, a strong, and I know you all team working hard to do that, but I think it needs to be just, just stated and so, um, as we move forward. So based on that then, and, and based on what Mike has already said, that you've begun to go back um, and do some study on, on some STEM comprehensive looking at and others. Um, that would still be in the scope. It's a little curved, but you could come back and it keep you moving. Um, I'm going to put a motion here on the floor, okay? Um, and let's just see what we get out of that one okay. um, to send some direction to the administration around that. And so that's what I said before. So I move that the board affirm the work in the direction thus far towards completing phase a phase one feasibility study for, for Booker T. Washington High School. Further, that the board encourages the review and inclusion of STEM curriculum opportunities um, as one method of addressing the whereas statement from the board approved resolution from December 18th, 2019 to ensure that Booker T. Washington High School has a vibrant and competitive academy that will retain and attract a diverse group of students from across the city. I'll second. The motion is on the floor by Mr. Clanton, seconded by Dr. Gabriel. Any discussion? Ms. Bassine? Um, <clears throat> Mrs. Is... I know. I'm sorry. Because I'm, I'm right over here doing this, and she saw it. Ms. Bassine and Ms. Campson. Um, thank you, Mrs. Moore Buffalo. Um, with all due respect, um, Mr. Clanton, I appreciate you offering uh, a motion on this, but I think this is exactly, um, for me, speaking for myself, um, I right now, I feel like the, the dis very discussion that we're having right now is the reason why I, I, I'm pleading with us to please have a work session on this. Um, we're having really good discussion, and uh, Mrs. Moore Buffalo's uh, comments just now around, um, you know, where this decision came from, where, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, the direction that we're going to go in, I think, and Booker T. Washington, I mean, as we've talked about for the last 30, 45 minutes, I think it warrants deeper uh, discussion. It warrants clarity for one, once and for all and it warrants a work session and not in this space that we're currently in because we're going to be back here again having this discussion again asking where Dr. Birdsong is asking us for clarity again um, and I definitely I think she deserves better than that too and the administration deserves better than that um, and so um, I don't, I, I, I think, you know, and, and most importantly, our students at Booker T. Washington deserve better than that. Um, so I'm just pleased asking uh, the board to consider, uh, you know, a May work session, uh, you know, that we can just have a discussion with Dr. Martin there, um, where we can come to some agreement around this, and perhaps we could talk to each other you know, before then and, and kind of review materials, kind of go back and refresh and um, uh, have work session discussion. So just, uh, I'm, I'm just pleased asking Ms. for that. Ms. Campson. I've been on the school board for five years now and my biggest concern about it is that we push it down the road and we push it down the road, and we push it down the road. So weeks go by, and months go by, and years go by, and we haven't finished. And, and it's, it's like we have all these blocks we put on ourselves. We have to have this meeting, and then, oh, no, well, we need another meeting. Well, no, I need more clarification. Let's have another meeting. Um, I, certainly, we need 
to give clarification to our superintendent now and, and perhaps have one sit down, but we then need to decide. We can't keep having meeting after meeting, year after year, and we look up and we're right where we were. That's where we are right now. Yes, thanks to our, our, our uh, uh, gentleman here, we have the repairs. We have roofs going on and HVAC going on and all of the things to keep our children safe, but we're not moving on what the school is all about. And so we need a sharp timeline. We don't need to wait another year. We don't need to be here again next April and we still haven't done anything. So that's a big concern I have and it's something that I keep seeing over and over and over again. So I'd like everyone to keep that in their minds is that we don't need to be spending months more on this. Maybe another month to clarify everything so everyone's real clear about what we're doing and where we are, but we don't need to keep going past that. And so I beg everyone to focus on the fact that let's not wait another five years and be sitting here doing the same thing again. Thank you, Ms. Campson. Is there any other discussion? So, Ms. Oh, I'm Bubba, sorry, Ms. Clanton. Yeah, so uh, again, um, I put this motion out here to try to bring clarity. Um, but again, you know, as we've gone through our, our governance training and everything else, trying to make sure that we, we coalesce around there, um, the work has to get moving. Um, the last meeting was what, January? Was that when the steering committee, the mm -hmm. last, was it February? First Next week seven? of February. February. Early February. Early February. Mm -hmm. um, and so we haven't had a meeting since that opportunity, which means that we're now delaying on this. If we are to, to, to give this opportunity and to put this on the work session um, in, uh, in May, next month, um, there is already a resolution that's been approved and adopted. So let's not about this and funds already appropriated to do this. I think that right now there is uh, clarity on you know what classify, uh, clarifies and what, what I've given in this motion here around that, around the STEM opportunities. And I think you've already said you've begun to do that research. Um, just making sure that our colleagues are there. I, I, I guess, Madam Chair, if I can, just to kind of, if I were to defer this motion to our work session as an item, um, do I have the commitment from my colleagues that we can come to some resolution and give clear direction to the administration and be, and be done? Is, is that? Dr. Gabriel? Yeah, so what is our ask then of the superintendent during that work session or is there an ask of us as individual mm -hmm. board members? Mm -hmm. That's what I need clarity on. So yes. what is the difference between now and then? Are we, mm -hmm. are we to come back and say, we want this and this? Uh, Mm -hmm. what, is, okay. what is the delta Doctor, between now okay. and now? Could I, could I interject Go ahead, Mr. Frankel. First of all, good evening, everybody. Um, we took your comments at our last presentation back, and um, we, I spoke with Ms. Goshen about the possibility of enhancing our CTE curriculum to coincide with the arts program, because we believed that we were moving forward by developing a comprehensive arts program, visual arts, uh, performance arts, but that the board wanted us to also look at enhancing CTE. And obviously we would start immediately with that because we want to uh, use CTE for the development of creating music, recording music, uh, documenting music, and, all, and art as well. So that would enhance the CTE curriculum. And then we, we started another conversation about you know, continuing to enhance it for student need or student interest. So that's what we walked away from, and that's what Mike Ross was referring to when he said we started looking into some of that. And, and Ms. Goshen was very helpful. She made some suggestions uh, to me. But what I'm a little confused about tonight, because I feel like now we're going to push the arts program and focus more heavily on CTE and so we would need some clarity on are, are we going with what I just stated a moment ago about what, where we thought we were heading or what exactly are I think for me Miss Buffalo it's yeah. exactly what you said that you walked away with I thought because even when we walked away from the work session I thought we had consensus that that's we're saying yes continue with an arts program but looking at 
what you can do with CTE and other STEM-related things to support that. I think that for members of the community, they have to understand that there's music engineering, but there's also graphic design that's going on right oh, there. There's, there's, there's masks. We could be doing modeling and simulation. That's a form of an art. Um, there's entrepreneurship that could potentially be taught there. Um, you know, when we look at partnering with Booker T, we cannot limit ourselves to just thinking tunnel on this thing, that there's so many opportunities. And that's why I said when I did this resolution that it wasn't to be so prescriptive because we wanted to hear from the community and the students on what the endless possibilities could be. So I'm happy to hear that you walked away from the conversation that we had at the work session and began to move in that direction so that when you get to the rest of the steering committee, because you heard it from the steering committee too, people brought it up. So you can begin to keep moving. So if I'm hearing that that's happening already, <clears throat> I think they're moving in the right direction. And, and the CTE would be focused on enhancing visual arts, <clears throat> performing arts, but I mean, we would move to, to elevate it, to support that and anything else that was generated by student interest. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's yeah, something that that's that's we walked away from, um, and that's what Mike was referring to. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead. Would like to make one clarifying statement. So we're educational facility planners, right. and we're architects, <laughs> okay? Oh, um, we can certainly research what's out there. We can bring to you exemplar programs as examples. We can bring to you what the community is telling us in terms of what they want to see in these buildings. But ultimately, this decision about what the programs are going to be for which we're designing a building to support have to be made by the school board. So there's a limit to what we could do. All right. So Mr. Jordan, and then we're going to wrap, um, mm -hmm. come to some consistency of what the, um, how we move forward. Okay, so Mr. Jordan, you can make, go ahead. Yeah, I, I guess we're still speaking to the motion. I, I would. Yes, we are. I, I would like it. I just want to repeat what I said a moment ago, and and what I think, what, what, where I recommend the process should be. So, if indeed Mr. Fraley, the administration, heard some things that we said at the work session and had some ideas, that's why I think the best process is for that team to go and come back with a recommendation for us to to consider I think that the, the problem that we run into is this thing and I'm I when I was saying a moment ago that I thought we were at 98 percent there I meant from the board's conversation mm -hmm. because I think I have heard um, um, at least from my perspective, some um, agreement. What I'm, what I'm worried about and what I'm trying to stay in the moment of, of uh, being, being unanimous is I, I, don't, I don't want to see it stopped. But I also, just from my frame of reference and my personal experience, I want it written down and I want it clear and I want it verified because too often um, when we talk about disparities and inequity, in my opinion, in my experience, this is what happens. And so I feel like it happened with Southside STEM I feel like it happened with Lake Taylor School. I don't want it to happen again with Booker T. And I think there is an opportunity. I think we're, I still think we're almost there. We need to be able to write it down and be clear and have the administration put that together with the benefit of whatever input we have, have whatever legal review that needs to occur if it has any impact on scopes of work and so on and so forth. And then I think we can come back and act collectively. But the um, I, I want to find a way to make it clear that this is not about delay. It's about 
um, the equitable opportunity for uh, students and I'll just say for students who have uh, who, who who deserve the opportunity for full fidelity and the reality of it is it is true we're having this conversation on because it's our second conversation on this over this multi-year period and so I'm all for moving forward I'm all for putting all the resources in that you know I still think we've got all kinds of one-time funds we could use to support a whole lot of this work but we need to write it down and we need to be clear and we need the in my view the experts to help craft what they are hearing from us and it gets sent to us and we have 10 days 14 days to review it and if we want to have discussions around it we can have discussions around it so that we come to act we are acting collectively as one and I think the administration leading that effort is the best opportunity for all of us to be on the same page and have the benefit of uh, that administrative insight and then we can vote be supportive and all go out there and be cheerleaders for the work moving forward dr Birdsong. Um, I, I appreciate your comments uh, the comments mr jordan my hesitation ar around what you just uh talked about is that it, it sounds like now the administration is being charged to turn around something quickly about a comprehensive program for booker t washington have it to you by next friday something that rick fraley apparently had a conversation with uh kenyetta goshen about uh, i assume and she's saying no. So I, I, I just I, that's, that's, we're not we're not in a, a position right now to make any like formal written recommendations around you know having this new academy or new vision um, for this work. No, all of, what just just for clarity, I'm not okay. the the conversation around comprehensive and all that was just the conversation that the board has had. You've heard that. Mm -hmm. I'm just simply saying is the you've you've. Uh, I can only speak for myself. I was not, you, you're, you were clear on the direction. I wasn't clear on the direction. And I've said that for some time. I am comfortable where I think I hear the board is and was comfortable where I thought the board was at the work session. That's why I, I thought we were kind of done and we were gonna try to figure out this steam-like thing. All I'm asking is if it's gonna be a steam-like thing, let's call it a steam-like thing and write it down and so it's clear. Right. And then and then vote on that thing. But what I yeah. What I think harms us is trying to do that uh, in the same meeting that we have the discussion, and I think it gets even more challenged as one who wrote six amendments not too long ago, and I, I think that causes challenges. So I think it is within the purview of the administration to take what you've heard the board say and take your own expertise and and send something back to us that say, hey, this is what we think. And hopefully we all say yes and, and move forward. But if we just stay where we are and just say move forward with the Academy for the Arts as is currently existing, um, we're not gonna get a 7-0 vote. I wanna get a 7-0 vote. So there's no clear. So it's, I mean, so there's totally clear of where we're going and, and total buy-in. Okay, so we've had the discussion. You want to say something? just one oh, final yeah, comment, ahead. if I can um, respond to what Mr. Jordan has just said. So to be clear, I, I'm confident that today, given my team a week or a week and a couple of days to come back with a a steam program initiative for the academy, that that's just not feasible with with everything else that we're we're doing right now it's not to say that I'm, I'm hearing now from mr. Fraley that there was a conversation or, or not around CTE and mr. Um, Ross is saying that you know that is something that we can definitely consider I would appreciate having the benefit of, of more time is if you want to you know throw a curveball in there to say we're interested in in moving this forward we give it back to mr ross as he engages the community around the stem con concept 
but I cannot say to you tonight that we're going to be able to come back to you next week with a comprehensive program steam for no, the academy. That's, that's where I think there's confusion. I'm not suggesting that you come back with a comprehensive steam program. I'm saying if it's steam, then in the resolution or in the whatever it is that we vote on, yeah. it just says feasibility study around steam. Okay, that's but it. Not a, a presentation no. around how this new academy is going to look. That's the purpose. I, if I understand, that's the purpose of the work. I agree. Okay. <laughs> Student rep. <laughs> Hi, yes, I just had a quick question. So um, one of the uh, issues on board that we're discussing is um, the time frame and delays and whatnot. And I just wanted to ask, where exactly um, is kind of the, the pressure for getting uh, this motion passed and, and whatnot in terms of Booker T and establishing a program, where is that exactly coming from? Um, We've been discussing this program since December 2019. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's a long time. I definitely after after hearing all this discussion, um, I think that due to the fact that there are so many conflicting opinions verse, uh, regarding what people want the program to be, I definitely would like to suggest from this standpoint, um, perhaps take a, a, a step back and I definitely feel like even though we have been discussing this for such a long period of time, in order to have um, the best public feedback and everyone, all sides of the discussion and argument feeling satisfied, I definitely think we should emphasize um, putting less time constrictions on NPS administration and also just acknowledging the fact that um, we really want to do this as kind of a one and done situation. We want to do it once and we want to do it correctly. Um, so I definitely understand the uh, pressure to get this going since we have been discussing this since 2019, but I also um, definitely think more um, discussion about what specific programs um, would actually go into place should be considered. Uh, for example, I was just thinking about um, in terms of the discussion surrounding the fact that um, some of the public wanted to address uh, perhaps switching out the um, the music and um, arts programs with more um, career technical education, perhaps somewhere to meet in the middle. Um, when I think about uh, career paths that draw attention that would attract students from across the city to come to um, Booker T. Washington, um, some of the first career paths people always think of is, oh, I want my kid to be an engineer, a doctor, or a lawyer. We already have the engineering program. We already have um, the medical program, perhaps <coughs> maybe something in the liberal arts that would already include something, um, the performing arts stuff that we have going on at Booker T. Washington High School, and, and kind of expand on that to maybe include um, something with that has to do with law and leadership and whatnot, um, because I definitely think that would include the career and uh, t technical education that is already there, and also include the arts that is already at Booker T but also bring in and solve the problem of we want to attract students from all across the city uh, with different career options. Thank you. Thank you. Buffalo, I have a quick question, because I think you're a great example. Um, you go to Maury High School, okay, right? Yes. You also go to the Governor's School for the Arts, right? I do not, but most of my um, extracurriculars, I consider myself an <laughs> arts student. An art yeah. student, but you want you're about to graduate this year. Yes, sir. And so you want to go off to college and major in what? I want to uh, major in in international and public affairs and minor in theater. Yeah. All right. You're in the medical program. I it am. Is. I'm not. Yeah, um, uh, many of my friends are interested in doing um, the medical health sciences, <laughs> but there are also multiple students like myself who um, have interest in, in the arts. And I definitely, one of the reasons I, I proposed considering perhaps expanding the idea of the arts to perhaps liberal arts, maybe even law, et cetera, mm. is because there is such a wide branch of where we could go <coughs> with not only attracting students um, to come in and expand their idea of what the arts means, um, but also entertain the aspect of there are jobs and opportunities um, and different career paths that could fit under that umbrella and leave both sides of the argument feeling satisfied. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so um, 
We, we have a motion on the floor. Um, what Mr. Clanton said, and I do agree with uh, Mr. Jordan, uh, need to write it down. <laughs> you know, I, I want to start the work. I want to get this going. Like I said, I want a vibrant program that the kids said, I'm going to Booker T. I'm filling out this, this, this application, and I'm, I'm going to attend this program. So with that said, <coughs> I'm going to take a poll. Um, that's a Go so ahead. I'm um, because the hour is getting yes, late. Yes, it is. Um, Alex is killing me. Um, I'm going to to move to defer. Okay. Um, this item to the work session so that we can write it down, <coughs> right. have a discussion, and come out um, uh, and have this item so that we so me deferring is asking for you to instruct to place it as an item mm -hmm. on the work session agenda. Um, so that we come out of that agenda as a board with a clear document or some type of direction that we can give the administration um, to move forward. I appreciate that, Mr. Clanton, and that is my suggestion. So, board, as when we come back together in May, we would have this all laid out. Mm -hmm. We will vote as a board to have clear direction to uh, the superintendent and administration as they um, continue the work on Booker T. Washington vision for the future. Um, taking all the discussion that is in tonight. We just want to written down, don't go and get your, uh, we don't want a big comprehensive, but we just want some clear direction written down that we can come together at the ne next work session, vote, and so we're all in harmony, we're all going. And we don't need to tell her exactly what to do. That's her job. job. That's her job. We tell her That's what, what our said. goal is, right. and then we exactly. let her design right. it. Right, right. Exactly. We, we want it written down yeah. as we move forward. So we're all clear. So, um, yes, ma'am. Ms. Ms. Buffalo, so I did a motion to defer. Right. Um, just if there's no objection, then that'll just stand. So we don't have to do a vote. Everyone's Everybody clear good? with that? Okay. okay. And so we thank you, Mr. Fraley. Thank you for coming tonight as we move on. Um, I have to remember where I am. <laughs> uh, Non-agenda <laughs> items. We're on okay. Section 601. Um, Ms. Tanner, do we have anyone here to speak for citizen comments on non-agenda items? Yes, um, for citizen comments on non-agenda items, we have one, two, three speakers. The first one is Barrett Hicks, followed by Carl Poole. Oh. Mr. Hicks, hold on just one second. We want to get the clock. Okay, here we go. Um. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to yeah. start. Okay. I'm Barrett Hicks. Uh, good evening, board. Good evening, Ms. Buffalo. Good, hey. great, great to see you in that position. Okay. Uh, first time able to say that. Uh, I'm Barrett Hicks. I'm the executive director for the Concerned Citizens Association, Tidewood Connection. We are a youth and uh, community advocacy group, and we've been coming here to these meetings for some 15 years. Tonight, I come forward in reference to the issue that was brought forward in one of your other board meetings uh, in reference to literacy. And the fact that we have 28 of 33 schools, elementary schools, supposedly not reading on grade level. I come tonight to ask, what are we doing? What's the plan? And there are some, some suggestions as to that uh, you surely accept some of the help from the community because we definitely need to go directly into, into the community and do some direct communications with the community. If our children can't read, all the rest of the stuff we're talking about is obsolete, don't mean anything. I hear all the great people, I mean, I've, I've seen and, and worked with and walked around and, and, and seen and listened to. This, this conversation you guys just had, I, I've heard before, about not understanding what's next. And I must talk about it. Southside STEM, we heard that name come up because of the fact that this sounds just like what ha happened at Southside STEM. They told us all this great stuff was coming, preeminent middle school STEM, STEM in the nation, all that great stuff. And the community had worked on that for, for years and years, and then all of a sudden at 2016, the doors opened. At the time, I had to step away. I was gone for about three years, come back 2019. I walk in, meet with the superintendent. She says, you know, I really, the board didn't really give me the directions on what to do with Southside STEM. And that definitely wasn't you, Dr. Bergson, but that was one of the reasons that we asked for you to come in to play. 
But these kids here, South Side STEM, we're in the same boat that we're talking about with Booker T right now. There, from my last viewing, number two from the bottom of all schools in the entire state of Virginia. That's unacceptable. That's truly unacceptable. And I would just hope that you guys would get it together in this sense. And I heard a couple of statements while I'm just sitting over there, you know, focus on the focus education and also molding. So if we found schools such as ADL that came on one year before Southside STEM that moved from number zero, dead last, to top 50, why aren't we modeling what happened there? And those folks, they tell us about the great things they did before. You're sitting up there. How about let's make that happen for those kids? Make it truly about academics. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Um, is Carl Poole here? Okay. Um, Susanna Shedd. Welcome. Good evening. Hello. Um, good evening, Norfolk School Board. My name is Susanna Shedd, and I'm a senior at Grassfield High School. I'm also here representing the Shenandoah Valley region as Miss Shenandoah Valley's teen, 2023. Today, I would like to speak to you all about the importance of including a medical health professions class as a science or an elective credit-bearing course in all of our public high schools. Considering the lack of students being able to volunteer in the hospitals and lack of medical career advocacy in public schools, there has been drastic shortages in medical personnel nationwide. There is a predicted shortage of 54,000 to 139,000 physicians by 2033, and there are 300,000 physicians that left their, their profession in 2021. These drastic shortages are largely due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the mental toll it took on many of our nation's physicians. Furthermore, America could face a shortage of, of up to 13 million nurses in 2030. That is completely unacceptable. According to the American Medical Association, 45% of all physicians are 55 years of age or older. And their wisdom is needed in the field of medicine, but they are getting burnt out, and we need younger medical staff to come in and help replace their jobs. The lack of education and lack of student volunteer opportunities are both major factors in why students don't want to work in the medical field. The field of medicine is completely and extremely broad and can be overwhelming to students who already have enough stress in their lives. By offering a medical health professions class in all high schools, students will be taught about the 200 medical careers they could pursue. Many of these careers are not widely recognized, such as radiation therapists, audiologists, podiatrists, and pharmacy technician. Lastly, these classes could also promote student volunteer programs or internships in hospitals to get students a better gauge on where these careers could lead them to. By encouraging students to pursue medicine through educational courses and student volunteer programs, the next generation of healthcare professionals will be secure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And this concludes our speakers for this evening. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. I know where I am now. I'm on 7.0. <laughs> Adjourn and have a good night. Thank you.